Yo, Mike's Music Method. Come on in, everybody. You know what you're here for. We are doing John Prines and Kurt Viles, if you, if you, if you want to. They did it together at one point. Very cute. Very cute. John Prine and Kurt Vile, how lucky. This song goes out to Rob and Rob. It is sponsored by Rob and Rob, so thanks to Rob and Rob. You can all thank them for sponsoring this song. If you want to, want to sponsor a song, check out mikesmusicmethod.com and click on the song sponsor tab and you can sponsor the next song. I'm very happy to bring this song. What an awesome tune. Um, I've heard it before, but because Rob and Rob requested it, I listened more and especially Kurt Vile's singing. There's something really satisfying about his delivery on this song. He doesn't have a great voice, but he just like hits this one out of the park. He just sings it. It's like so honest and direct and I really enjoy it. So the capo is on the fourth fret. And I apologize, Rob. I know you asked for the Kurt Vile Prine version. I just did the earlier Prine version because it's one guitar. It's crystal clear. When Prine and Vile are playing it, there's the two guitars and they're doing different parts. And I just found it kind of like distracting because even if I could tab out one part, there's notes from the other part that stand out. And it's it just like, it, there's too much crisscrossing of the two guitar parts. They're very similar regardless though. So this is the John Prine one. Don't I hope you're not mad at me. The capo's on the fourth fret. If you want to play along with Kurt and John, the capo's on the fifth fret. It's not a beginner picking piece if you're a beginner. Check out the Travis Picking playlist. But it's not super hard either. I'd say it's medium difficulty. Uh, do this, get good at this before you try to tackle the John Hurt stuff. Um, I'll stop rambling. One more thing though, timestamps are your best friend. If you're an advanced player, I do nice slow run-throughs way at the end of the video. So if you feel pretty confident, you can just download the tab for free and play along at the end of the video with my slow run-throughs. But for the rest of you, here's a measure by measure slow run-through of how lucky. Let's do it. Whew. Measure one. We don't have the first beat here, we got a rest. So it's technically the pickup measure. I'm calling it measure one. Capo is four. We've got a basic C chord. There is no Travis picking on this measure, so don't let it trip you up. It's a bit different than the rest of the song. So we're just pinching five and one on a C chord. And I'm doing, I don't, yeah, you would do thumb and middle actually. Thumb and middle. Then I pinch five and two, but my pinky is now down on the third fret of the second string. And I know you don't need the whole C chord, but the song's gonna be all on a C chord, so I'm just kind of framing the intro that way. So five and one, five and one, and then five and two with thumb and pointer, and my pinky's down on the third fret of that second string. You can have the pinky down the whole time because it's the beginning, so it doesn't really matter. Whew. Measure two. Now we got some cool action on this C chord. Notice in this measure, his thumb is going from five to three. And the first, mo uh, first beat here is a pinch and a hammer. So I'm pinching five and two with my thumb and pointer. And I'm hammering my first finger down onto the first fret of the C chord. Then it's my thumb alone on the third string. And then right after that, I'm hitting the first string with my middle finger. Sounds the first string open. And then the second half of the measure is thumb and thumb. The strings are five, two, three. Thumb, pointer finger on the second string, and then thumb on the third. So that whole measure, three, four. Whew. Measure three, moving right along here. Still a C chord. You'll notice that now his thumb, instead of going from five to three, is going five to four. So get used to that. And it does change a little bit at the end because we actually have open at the end here. So we'll play through it slow. We've got a five and two pinch again with the hammer on, with that pointer finger there. And thumb is alone on four. And right back to the second string with the pointer finger again. that down then the second half of the measure is five with a thumb and then open on the second string so we got to lift that pointer finger because it's open 
I'm still doing that with the pointer. So fifth string second is now open. And here I kind of just lift the chord up because now we have open on the D string. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird. Why is he doing that? But he is, he's giving it that open movement. And then we go immediately to the second string open again. So that ending is fifth, second, fourth, second. I know it sounds weird, slow and alone, but I promise this is it. And then we're hammering into an F chord. But that whole measure, uh, we pinch at the beginning, three, four. One more time. Open, open. Then we're hammering into an F chord. Now, I do it with a thumb over the top, so we're in measure four now. I do it with a thumb over the top, but there's no reason in this song why you couldn't just hammer down into the entire F chord. In measure four, let's work on getting a nice solid hammer on. So we're coming out of the last note in measure three is that open. And I want you to hammer into the chord. Practice whichever way you want. Most finger picking songs have the thumb over the top. I'm pretty sure in this song that we don't, we don't need it. So either way, but right when we hammer, we're also hitting the sixth string with our thumb. So I call that a compound movement. We've got two things happening. That hammer on is sounding, but then our thumb is also hitting there. So it's only the thumb. And then we go immediately to the, I would do the pointer finger on the third string, and then the thumb on the fourth. And then it's just thumb on six, thumb on four. So after the hammer, thumb, pointer on the third, thumb on the fourth. So that's what you want to get down really solid. Same time. And then we'll finish the measure. It's just thumb, thumb. Whew. Measure five, we just hang out on that F chord. Here I'm pinching six and two. Thumb in middle, then thumbs alone on four. And immediately back to the middle finger on the second string. So thumb middle, thumb middle, and then it ends six, three, four, which is thumb, pointer, thumb, three, four. One more time. So fairly simple measure there. Then measure six. hammer into the C chord. Prine does this cool little trick a lot where he is just hammering the low note. So I just hammer into the chord, but you're really only, he's only sounding the fifth and the third, and he's only ha really hammering on that open to three. But he's just preparing for the next chord, so you're hammering them all down. So five and three with thumb and pointer, then thumb does the fourth string, then it's and, which is the second string with my middle finger. Thumb, uh, or I don't know, maybe index finger there. I'm not exactly sure. I would do my middle on that second string. Then it's just five, four with the thumb. So pinch five, three, four, two, five, four. You got it. Whew. Measure seven is really pretty. I like this one a lot. We have this nice. D note leading into the G chord, which has a D in it, um, and I'll explain that here. We have a C chord, we do five to two, and it's thumb pointer. Then we do four with our thumb to two again, but now I put my pinky down on the third fret of that second string. So our melody is actually gonna be one, three, then open on the first string, and then back to three. Da, 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 just up and down the scale. that thumb in between all of them. So five, two, then it's four to two, but my pinky's down on that two. Then it's five to one, and I do that with my middle finger. I ring that open, five to one, and then back to four to the second string. And my pinky's still down, so you never have to lift it up once you put it down. Pinky down. But right after you do that last note, which is the third fret there, we're moving, we're keeping our pinky there and we're moving into a G chord for the next measure. So I'll say the strings here, five, two, four, two, five, one, four, two, and then move into a 
G chord for the next measure. And that's easy. It's just six to four with the thumb. That's it. Pew, 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 pew. Mike's Music Method donation pitch. Guys, the value for value model, it means I am putting all my time and talent and treasure into making this channel and putting it out there to be available for everyone at no charge. And all I ask is that you consider what value you can give back. What value did I provide you with? Is that worth um, 20 bucks a song, every song you learn from me? Is it worth 40 bucks a month? Is it worth five bucks a month? You can set up re recurring um, monthly payments on PayPal. That's your best bet. If not, Patreon is good. They do take a bitter, bigger cut. I always tell everyone about that. But either are fine. PayPal is pre preferred. You can also friend me on PayPal or send it as a friend and then they don't take as much of a cut because we're internet friends after all. But value for value model. I spend so much time. I don't rip my tabs off the internet. I sit there and listen with nice headphones meticulously. Play, pause, note for note, transcribe the songs as accurate as I can get them for you. And then I give you these lengthy, probably too long, <laughs> too lengthy tutorials. So if you're ever stuck, you can go to any freaking measure in the song and here I am breaking down every little measure for you. So value for value, what, what are these videos worth to you if Mike's music method was to disappear from the internet? You know, would you go, ah, oh, crap, like I could have, I could have give, given Mike 10 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month or hell, I could have spared giving Mike 50 bucks a month because he could, it's like a, having a guitar teacher here with you. So consider what is a value for value model to you and just give back. The more you give, the more time I can pour into these channels, which means you giving is just giving, you, by you providing me with some money, which buys me time, I'm able to give more videos to everyone in internet land. And I think it's a win-win. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a win-win, the value for value model, and it's always free to, to those of you out there who don't have the means. I'm not trying to guilt trip you. You can always send me a lovely email, an encouraging email, and those go a long way to keeping me motivated during the late night editing hours of these videos. So that's it. Pew, 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 pew. I have no idea what the, what the laser beams have to do with John Pry and how lucky, but I'm in the mood for laser beam guns. Later, y'all. Let's keep going. Before we keep going, that's half of the intro. You're doing fantastic. Uh, there's not too many other tricks in the song. Let's take it from the top just to make sure you know, we know what we're doing here. So really slow from the top. Two, three, four, rest. Sounded nice. Whew. We probably should have finished nine before we before we played it, because uh, it's still on the G. So we had our, our pinky still down on the third fret of the second string. We're still in the same chord coming out of eight, and then nine is six four with the thumb, and then right to the middle finger on the first string. Six four and is on the first string. And the second half of the of the measure is six two, and I do that with my pointer finger. Six, two, and then thumbs alone on four. And then it kind of repeats, but some slight variation. So we got 10, at least the chord structure repeats, right? Some different flourishes here. So we've got, go back to the C. And this one I'm hearing in pinch, and he's hammering into the C, C chord. Uh, and this time it's not just, it's not five and uh, three, it's five and two. So I'm pinching thumb and pointer and hammering into the C chord. Then the thumbs alone on the third string, like we did in the in measure two. And then the middle finger plays the first string. And then it ends just five, two, three. Thumb, pointer, thumb. Next measure kind of starts the same. Here I'm not hearing that low hammer again in measure 11. I'm just hearing um, like we've done before. You're pinching five and two and only hammering on that first finger. Then thumb on four. Or you go back to the other pattern with the thumb on four. Then the second string. And we've seen this before. 
five, then open on the second string, and then open on the fourth, open on the second, where we hammer into the F, all that's exactly the same. I'm just gonna jump ahead. Uh, 14's basically the same, we just have an extra pointer finger playing the third string at the very end, otherwise it's the same as the previous time. Thumb and, it's the only difference there. Measure 15, let's spend a little bit of time on this. It trips me up. It's not that difficult, but it's a pattern I'm not used to playing. He's doing that G with the third fret down on the second string. We hammer into the G. So I'm hammering open to three on the sixth string. Then I immediately hit the second string. I'm doing it with my pointer, but it doesn't matter if you choose your pointer or your middle here. Then the thumbs on the fourth string. We go back to the second string, but this time it's the first fret. And one thing to note, that hammer on is really quick. It's not an eighth note. It's not like one and two and three. It's one E. And you still have the and, one and, one and, one E and, one E and. Very quick hammer on. It's almost like he didn't even mean to do it. He just like didn't get to the chord quick enough. It's hard to know if it was intentional or not. So we got that quick hammer to the second string, fourth string open with the thumb, the second string again, but now it's the pointer finger on the first fret there. Back to the sixth, then it's open on the second string. And here he hits the fifth string open. I know you're gonna wanna do the fourth, I wanna do the fourth every time. But you got that cool kind of walk. That third fret, and then it's open on the fifth. And then it leads into the next measure. So one more time, measure 15, slow three, four. Open on the fifth string. Whew. Then right into 16, we pinch five and two on a C chord. Thumb and pointer. Thumb on four. And here I think he goes down to the sixth string here. So that third ring finger is coming up to the lower third fret, and it's six, three. And then he does the fifth string open again here to get the cool little walk. He's doing that G, G A C kind of walk. G G A C G A C. So I measure five and two. Thumb alone on four. And then it's six, three, five. Six, three, five. And then right into 17. Where we got a fun little walk on C. Sorry, I can't really read my tab. I'm pinching five and two. Then it's thumb on four, pointer on three. Ring finger goes up, six string thumb. Then the second string with the pointer. Thumbs on four, and then pointer is on three. the entire intro we'll play it slow but congrats really cool picking huh nothing super hard but a lot of nice little colors and flourishes in there and i promise the verse is just basically a simplified intro so you did all the hard work How lucky can one man get? Pew! An important and helpful note about the tabs I provide. Number one is they're all free to download at mikesmusicmethod.com. Yeah, eh, free? Eh, eh. Uh, so go get them. They're all free there. Uh, hit Control F and you can search that whole page for whatever song you're looking for. The second thing to note is that I, I produce them on flat.io. There's a bunch of different software and uh, softwares and whatever, websites where you can produce your own tabs. But but keep in mind, even if you don't actually read the, the sheet music and you're just reading the tab, that's probably 99% of you, you should still note the little bars, wherever they are, underneath the tab. Um, I don't always put them on the screen because it makes it kind of busy. If that's something I should do, please comment below if you think it's worth it and it's not too much information. I find it super important. Honestly, I'm 
I'm looking at them quite frequently, especially when I'm first learning a song. Uh, well, I actually know how to read the music, so I can I can sight read it, the rhythms, but all that I'm trying to get across is those little slashes are really important because it looks like a whole bunch of nonsense. But you always, not always, but again, 99% of the time, you're just doing the thumbs on the downbeats. So the, the rhythm might be divided one, two, three, four, that's all your thumb. But then look when those two, when the slashes are connected into an eighth note, because that means your rhythm is one and two and three and four and. I don't, you don't need to become a rhythm expert, but just having that basic idea of like one, two and three, four, verse one, two, three and four, it's gonna help you really get quicker at deciphering what all these random numbers are, right? If you don't have the rhythm, it's gonna be confusing. But then once you do have the rhythm, with the finger picking, it's a special extra added bonus because you know on all the numbers, one, two, three, four, right? It's always the thumb, 99% of the time. The thumb's just playing the downbeats. So that to me is very helpful. It's gonna avoid confusion. One thing I do a lot of is I'll do grape as a single syllable versus apple. So if a measure is really tripping me up and I'm having trouble like remembering the rhythm, I'll just know it's like grape, apple, apple, grape. Thumb, thumb, and thumb, and thumb. Or you can come up with a stupid sentence, right? I, I like to eat the food. I like to eat the food. Like whatever is gonna help your mind grab the rhythm, right? You might have a really long tab and then weigh on measure 17, you keep getting tripped up, but if you have your stupid little saying, I like the yummy food, you know that when you come there, you can hum that, I like the yummy food, just to make sure you're getting the rhythm right. So I find those to be really helpful. Um, I'm doing this too much. It's a helpful learning tool. Put it in the toolkit and use it when you get tripped up on rhythm and when you can't remember the, you know, the beat of the phrase, use one of those tools to help. Slow run of the intro. One, two, three, four, rest. Top of the verse, let's just go through it real quick, get the right hand pattern down, then we'll put the vocals in the place. Pattern's pretty easy. Uh, we start on a C chord, and a lot of the rhythm, what we just talked about, grape, apple, 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 grape, apple, apple, apple. So it's always the thumb alone. Then we got two and three and four and one, two and three and four and. On the C chord, we do six, four, three, Six, or sorry, five, four, three, and then it's six, two, and two's with my middle, and then thumb is on four, and the pointer's on three again. Five, four, three, six, two, four, three, thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer. And it does that twice. Then we go to an F chord. Idea, but of course the string set is different because it's an F not a C and we have six four three six two four three six four three six two four so once in a while he's not doing the and beat I wouldn't worry about being super particular about when that's happening but you'll notice in 20 there's the and beat one two and three and four and and then 21 it's just one two and three and four I don't know that there's perfect rhyme or reason to that. It's just prime giving it some organic variation. So you got the C twice, the F twice, back to the C. Then in measure 24, we have our G chord. 24 is just six, four, six, three, four. Thumb, 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 pointer thumb. Then 
25, we have a pinch at the beginning, pinching six and two, and then it's four, three. So thumb and middle, six and two, then thumb on four and pointer on three. Then the second half is just six, two, four, and that two is my middle finger. So that whole measure, 25, three. Got it. We'll keep going because 26 is back to the C chord. 27, the F again. Yeah, I think every time on the F, the second one, he just has the four instead of the four and. Back to C in 30. Yeah, and then 31, it's interrupted by the G. And that's just six, four, three, six, two, four, three. Thumb. Back to a C chord with that little funny walk again. So it starts the same: five, four, three, six, two, and then we play the fifth string open, not the fourth, the fifth. And then the very last one before things repeat is thirty-three, which is kind of borrowing from the intro pickup beat, but a little different. We pinch five and two. Thumbs alone on four, then immediately the middle finger hits the first string. So thumb and pointer, five and two. Thumb alone, middle finger. Then this goes up, six. Then I hit the second string, but my pinky is down on that third fret of the B string. Six, two, and then the thumb does the fourth string, because we're still on a C chord. Repeats for measure two, or sorry, for measure whatever it is at the top of the verse. Yeah, 18. No, I lied. The first time it does go back to measure two, there's a little interlude kind of solo thing, and then another verse. All right, let's sing it the whole verse real slow. How I go about singing, um, if the picking is too hard, just strum the chords, right? Make sure you can sing it with a really simple guitar part. Um, and the chords are just C, F, C, G. The last one's interrupted by the G a little bit early. Today I walked down the street I used to wander. Yeah, shook my head, made myself a bed. There were all these things I don't think that I remember. Hey, how lucky. From there, I would just do the thumb. Today I walked down the street I used to wander. Yeah, shook my head, made myself a bed. You get the idea? Then I would add a very simple pattern. One, two, three, and four, one. And then you build up to the actual pattern, which is a little more complicated. Today I walked down the street I used to wander, yeah, shook my head, made myself a bed. You get the placement, you get the idea, go slow, it's not going to happen all at once. Just because you can sing it easy and play it easy doesn't mean you're suddenly going to have this easy, right? This is its own thing that you're going to have to practice. You can piecemeal it together like I did until you build up in complexity. All right, so we have the intro and the verse, then the intro again with, with a little instrumental break and then another verse. But then there is a different instrumental break, which is at like 139 in the song. And if you go to the tab, likesmusicmethod.com, free download, it is measure 34. And he's hammering on this F chord. If you're doing the chord this way, I suppose you can hammer the whole chord down, or you can make it more bluesy by just hammering from the first fret to the second. But when I listen to it, not, you know, I'm hearing this part like this because we're pinching six and three and it's clearly open to two that's being sounded where if you're barring, you're not going to get it. But don't worry if this chord is hard for you to do. Don't mess up your thumb. Take it easy. Play it this way. That's fine. But what he's actually doing is six and three with the hammer, hammering them open to the second fret on the third string. Then it's thumb alone on four. Then the middle finger plays the second string. And it's just thumb, thumb. And that happens again. Then we have a C chord. Here 
I'm just hammering, I'm pinching, we've seen this before. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. 36, we're pinching five and three with the hammer on. Then the thumb alone on four. Middle finger plays the second string. Then it just ends five, three, four. Thumb, pointer, thumb. But 37 is a little different. Pinching five and one. Thumb is alone on four, right back to the first string. Then I do the sixth string, I'm gonna move that finger up, sixth string, then the pinky's on the second string, and my thumb is on four. So we've seen that very similar before. And then that repeats three times. So the F to the C. From measure 38, so that part repeated three times, and we go to a C chord, slightly different material here, but hardly. Pinching five and two, thumb alone on four, then it's the middle finger plays open there. And then the ring finger goes up, and it's six, two, four, thumb, pointer, thumb. 39, also pretty similar seen before we hammer into the G chord. I'm pinching six and three, thumb and pointer, and hammering on that G. Only need to use that one finger. And it's four, two, six, three, four. Hammer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, middle. Then back to the C. Pinch five and two, four, three. Then the ring finger goes up and it's six, three, and then this is where we hit the fifth string open. So we've seen that part before, and then it ends on the C. In 41, we've seen that a bunch before. So that is the bridge. Remember, not too much new material, but that whole F, it starts on the F on the four chord. The coda. All right, so we had that bridge, we go back to the verse, and here's the coda, and it's just the way they tag the final lyric, which is normally, how lucky can one man get? It's interrupted by an F. Ooh, how lucky can one man get? Ooh, how lucky can one man get? The Kurt Vile version has a slightly different ending than the regular Prine version. Here I'll show you the Prine version. Same chord structures, it's just how they're holding them and how they're arpeggiating them. So we interrupt the verse. If you look on your free tab to download, Instead of going on from 18, we interrupt it with the F chord, which is measure 43 in the tab. Ooh, nothing new on that F chord. Back to the C, how lucky can to a G chord one man get. That measure 46 has that A in it, so look out for that. And then ooh, we just arpeggiate the F. How lucky. measure he's just walking it it's a third fret on the sixth string open and then he walks through the C chord that's it yeah a nice intimate zoom close up for the nice slow run throughs you guys ready two three four rest
verse again. And then after that, we'd go after the fine, that next verse, 33, we'd go right into 34, which is the bridge. Two, three, four. Thank you, Rob and Rob, for writing this song. Requesting this song, I mean, how lucky. <laughs> beep, beep.